um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Hey. Ow. Oh. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Here we go. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good morning, good people. Well, actually, it's afternoon here on the East Coast. My body still says West Coast. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day as we get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Oh, my goodness. We landed at 5.30 this morning. By the time we got all of our bags and everything and got back home, came home, took a shower, and got a chance to lay down in my own bed. You know, I love traveling, but there's nothing like sleeping in your own bed. It was an incredible trip, uh, to say the least, with uh, kind of, there was a whole lot of shaking going on yesterday, and some of you may have seen um, a clip on NBC News of me in my hotel room with the shaking a little bit from the earthquake. I realized it, and I had some people who were from California. I was like, man, I was up in Oxnard when the one hit, you know, during the earlier part of the week. <clears throat> and then I'm sitting here now in Los Angeles, and one hits in Pasadena. They're like, it's you, buddy. It's you. I, I know I put on a few pounds from all of the food and stuff, the uh, the fat burger and the uh, in and out burger and all the different places my, my daughter took me and stuff, but I didn't realize I was literally making the ground shake. So, Bear with me. I've just gotten back, got a couple hours of sleep and things, and so I'm still getting my wits about me and stuff. And my man, Game Time Brian, wants me to join him because he's got a few questions to ask me, um, and I'll join him at 3 o'clock for his lunchtime chat today. And I may do my live stream that should have been last night, tonight, um, because we have just been, it's just been crazy. Uh, one, the time difference and everything else and the traveling between practice and things, we weren't able to do our membership stream or our regular Monday night stream. Monday night, I was literally in the airport when we heard some news from Pretty Ricky as well as Brian Brodus. Brian Brodus has become the Dallas Cowboys go-to guy who's even uh, showing some love, spending time with a lot of the great YouTubers out there and stuff and uh, doing the whole circuit. Former scout and a man that knows what he's talking about. Um, today he was actually on uh, G-Bag Nation and he's looking deeper into uh, Trey Lance after going through the film as well as uh, Mozzie Smith and I want to get to that in a bit too. The um, thing with CD, this is it's it's in, it's insane, okay? Now, I believe that they're close. I believe Jerry Jones is going to do what Jerry Jones does. We have to have some more drama. I think Jerry Jones, the relevance of the drama has served him well. You think about it. Uh, somebody had posted this morning that in 2004, 2004, the Dallas Cowboys were worth uh, right about a billion dollars. And the Commanders were worth $1.1 billion, was the number one franchise. Since that time, the Commanders' value has not kept up with the Cowboys, and the Cowboys are the most valuable at 9.8. Say what you will about the Cowboys not winning Super Bowls, they've made a lot of money. They made an incredible amount of money. And say what you will about the Cowboys not winning the Super Bowl, they find a way to be able to field still one of the top teams in the NFL. So Jerry Jones is getting, <laughs> he's getting what he wants. He wants the Cowboys to be relevant. Now, we heard about the C.D. Lamb situation pretty ricky, whether you want to believe that or not, as well as Brian Brodus has basically said they've agreed with the number um, per year. Now it's a matter of the structure of it. How much of it's guaranteed? How much of it is a signing bonus? How much will he get to check right now? And so on. And I'm sure that, you know, C.D. Lamb wants to get there, and we want him to get there as well. The thing that's stupid is we've got two weeks of training camp in the books. We have almost half of our padded practice out the way. And see, now, because we've gotten the first preseason game, Cowboys were off yesterday. They get back on the field today, and it's going to be weird because it'll be 
three o'clock when they come off the field and we'll get the news and things. And having been there, I would have been there at practice and stuff. And so now it's late in the evening. I just got to get used to being back here on the East Coast. And I really miss being there with the Cowboys. And tomorrow they will be practicing against the Rams. So they'll practice today and they'll practice tomorrow. Um, probably practice Thursday. Friday will be a walkthrough. Or maybe actually, excuse me, Thursday will probably be a walkthrough. And then Friday will be an off day, and then they'll play on Saturday. And so now there's not a lot of practices that are left. Now, the good news is Dak Prescott's got a lot of work with some of the other guys that are going to have to play. But you have hamstrung your team. And Jerry Jones doesn't seem to have a problem with that. And the whole thing of we're all in and everything else and the prove it years and things, the fact that you've really done nothing different to get a different result is maddening. And the venom that I felt from a lot of the fans out there won the cost. And I want I want you to think about this for a second. I want you to think about this for one second, okay? Um, we went to SoFi Field, incredible stadium, first time I've been there. We were on the plaza level. You see the shots that I took from the, you know, back of the end zone and stuff. It wasn't the 50-yard line. Those tickets would have cost a bit more than what I did. But the tickets that I got were $81. $81 to be there at the actual game, right? If you go to Cowboys practice, it's $23 if you want to be on the sideline there each day. If you want to have a seat for practice in the VIP, it's $209 for one day. Preseason game, which... Yeah, you know, get it. You're not seeing the primo guys out there or anything like that. But still, you saw some action. Just trying to put this in perspective of what it costs for the Cowboys to see camp versus a game. And quite frankly, a regular season game, you can get some nosebleed seats or at least standing room ones for that kind of money. So as Jerry Jones goes through to get every bit of money he can from us, the fans, versus him paying his players, it's maddening. You know, you don't cut us any slack. You don't give us a home fan discount. Why should the players? And if you're the player, if you're the player who's seen Zach Martin have to go ahead and fight to get his money and being a guy who's got more Pro Bowls than, than, than um, holding penalties, when you see your franchise quarterback, you know, not get paid or having to struggle to get his, why is it that we as fans think that the players are being greedy when they're learning and emulating the franchise? So they'll get it done. They'll get it done, and we will see our team whole by the season. The question will be is, will it hurt? And the other part of the problem now, too, is now the Cowboys are practicing against other teams. You don't want to bring in C.D. Lamb day one. He's practicing full go and then pulls a hamstring or something. So this is the madness that is Jerry Jones. But, you know, we don't own it. So there's nothing we can do about it. So my exuberance from the game. I'm sitting up there, like I said, in the end zone, and I'm seeing some good things from Mozzie Smith and things. I'm seeing some bad things from Trey Lance. I have yet to see the whole game uh, film or anything like that because I've been running around like a crazy man, getting back here and everything else and spending time with my family. So I want to defer to Brian Brodus for his thoughts on the game. So I saw... And you've seen breakdowns uh, by, you know, like CFO and things of, of some plays. He, Mozzie had three incredible plays in that game. But I also saw Philly 500 who posted a video where um, Mozzie didn't have a great play. Now, not everybody's going to have a great play every single time. And sometimes you miss assignments. Sometimes you're just tired, whatever. But we're being critical and saying, here's what we need. We can't have you taking off plays. And that's what Brian Brodus is saying. Now, he's also talking about Trey Lance. Because Trey Lance, like I said, that touchdown pass that should have been, you got to make that play. I know it's not exactly an easy play because the guy is run, the, the, the defender is running in your sight line. But you've got to have the anticipation of being able to get that ball over it. And, you know, it's, it's almost maddening to me because I hear 
so many people saying, yeah, well, he's got a lot to learn, but he's coming along, he's getting there, and, you know, you, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's like, wait a minute. You got a guy who's proven right now, who looks polished, and you say, get rid of him. But you, you say, well, let's have patience with this guy. Let's have patience with this guy. I'm sorry. We have four gifts. We have the ball down there in the red zone. You must be able to convert more than just field goals. You just do. Now, with all of this being said, with all of this being said, we're also in the middle of training camp. We're also in the middle of training camp where I've seen Mozzie Smith as the first guy out on the field working his hands. And I've been talking about the whole time I have been in training camp and you saw the dividends being paid off and you've seen him going at it. Boom, boom, boom. Possibly, and I'm not trying to make excuses for Mozzie, possibly he's gotten a lot of work and maybe the guy got tired. Maybe he just blew his wad early in that drive, the exuberance of the game, and then he was tired. But let's listen to Brian Brodus on 105 The Fan. Shout out. Shout out to the real media out there. Um, I was looking for him. I, I was definitely looking for him out there, but I didn't see them. A chance to watch Trey Lance's tape. Uh, oh, you've gotten a chance to look, go back, look at the actual tape. We, yeah. we always have the initial reaction, what we've seen from the game, from the TV copy. Right. And then you get a chance to go back, watch the tape, see things a little bit more clearly. Trey Lance, better, worse, or about the same as what you had seen uh, live on Sunday? Gotten better at practices since you guys uh, departed. Uh, in the game the other day, missed some opportunities where – his accuracy wasn't very good. Uh, he made his receivers have to work several times to get the football. I think there were a couple of different times where they set him up to maybe make a throw that would have likely put points on the board. They had a, they had a wheel route that they ran uh, with uh, Princeton Fant that I felt like that McCarthy called it with knowing that with how the Rams were going to play it down in that, uh, down in that s section of the field. And he threw the ball back to his left, where you know it was a, a probably a harder throw. But there were some there were some throws that he could have made in that game that could have ended up as scoring plays for this uh, for this football team. He just missed them. I know you felt like Mozzie Smith had been uh, overly criticized when you got the chance to watch the first time. Getting into the tape, watching the tape a little bit, improvement, looking a little more solid. I, I know it looked like that third with drive, he was winded. Yeah, playing with his hands. Uh, it's unfortunate that the screenplay that he made, he plays off the, uh, the, the, the block of Linder, the center, and does a really nice job of extending his hands, which is something that they, they coach him all the time. It's hands, Mozzie, hands, Mozzie, not outside, inside, Mozzie, inside hands, Mozzie. And so his hands were much better. His extension was much better. He controls the center. And then he reads the screen, and he gets over and makes the play. And then the very next play, he does absolutely nothing. It's like he took a play off. It's like, oh, well, hey, I made a play, so now I get to take a play off. And what they need him to be is the player that played the screen. They need him to be the player that fires his hands inside and controls the blocker and plays square. And those are the things that I think that – you know, that Mozzie's capable of doing. I, you know, I, we, we talk about him every day in, in a way of there are flashes of plays that he makes. And, you know, I've always been taught a flash player is not a great player. Mm. And, and so, you know, that's the, that's the problem. And they need more consistency from him. He's capable of making plays. He's capable of learning. Um, but there's times where he does get winded. And it might be a little bit of his conditioning that is a problem. The shoulder, the rehab, all those things. Maybe he didn't get to work. But we've been through now two weeks of camp. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys that are in good condition right now and are playing a lot of snaps and practicing a long time. And, and not looking, you know, not taking plays off. And, and that's the unfortunate thing with Mozzie. Every time you see the two or three really good things, there's probably another one or two other things where you're going, man, if he could just find a way not to play this way, uh, he'll be a much better player. You kind of answered it, but I was going to ask, you know, how often does that, like, light stay on? Because I, I yeah. saw some of that in Oxnard where I'm like, did he just give up right there? Is he half a Yeah, like, it's how... unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's unfortunate because he, he made a really good play of controlling the center and getting over on the screen. And you're like, you know, you're, you're saying that now that's what you need your one technique to do, to extend, play with power, 
throw that blocker aside, and then get over and make a play. And then the very next play, I could clip it for you guys and show it to you, where he it, he acts like that, okay, huh, whew, made a tackle. Now I get to take a little break. No, I mean, hey, you're still – you're still fighting to, you know, to get off the field. And, you know, when, when he plays those four or five plays in a row, you know, he needs to be good on three or four of those plays. He, he just can't be a one good play. Okay, now, I don't know which play. And, again, this is the one. Uh, let me, I'm going to pull something up here because um, the thing is, is now the, the, the funny thing is people now expect you to, as a defensive lineman, that you're going to have to make every play, that you've got to be perfect on every play. This is the play that Philly 500 looks at. Just one play, okay? Now, let me change the camera angle right here. I, and I don't know if this is the one that Brian Broads is talking about or not. Okay, now, I have explained more than once. Your job on as a defensive lineman is to hold the ground. That's rule number one. Hold the ground keep the guards from being able to go off to the linebackers and it's the line jackbackers job to make the tackles okay so i don't know if this is the play that brian brodus is talking about that that mozzie you know or not but i'm just i want to point out something here as i look um from being down in that position we got mozzie right here okay mozzie is going to be tied up with the offensive lineman the hole is going to be right here what I want you to look at is the play, the missed tackle was not on Mozzie as much as it was the linebacker. We don't know what the assignment was. See, watch the play. Watch the play. Boom. Mozzie hits, and we don't know if this is his assignment in his gap because you see he's got his helmet over this side. You see he does not give up any line of scrimmage. You see the linebacker right here? This is probably the linebacker's assignment. So people look and say, oh, he sucks. Understand this. Football on the defensive line, when you do not take your gap responsibility, you mess up because everybody's got an assignment here to cover all of the spots. The linebacker, to me, I'm going. this is what I'm assuming, that this is a linebacker spot. And look what happens with the linebacker. See, right here, he's going on the double team, and this is what I talk about, you have to hold up. The guard is getting off, I'm sorry, the center is getting off and getting to the second level to the linebacker. And the linebacker goes this way when he should have filled. If he had filled, look, the linebacker goes all the way over here and leaves the assignment. You follow me, guys? Let me go back. Look. See, the way I'm looking at this play is I'm looking at it and saying this is A gap is Mozzie Smith's responsibility. B gap over here is 68s this a gap is the linebacker the linebacker is gone that's the linebacker's job watch look mozzie boom takes the hit gets his head into there he takes on the double team his job, hopefully, is to hold them both up so that way the linebacker can recognize the linebacker should be going right up in there. I don't know what the linebacker is looking at. Look at this. You tell me, what is the linebacker who's looking up here? That's the ball carrier. Mozzie's doing his job. He's doing his job. They're not giving up ground. You got to be right now. Boom. Your job, Phil, downhill. And he stops. The thing is, I don't know what he saw. I, I guess he's seeing the two guys here, and he's thinking he's going to take it wide when he left his assignment. And if you leave your assignment, if you leave your assignment, you leave the defense exposed. Bottom line. Bottom line. And here's the problem. Here's the problem right now, and I'm going to tell you guys who don't know Dick, okay? Okay. If Mozzie, here's the problem. 
I wish I, I'm going to break this down when I get the full thing. This is just a Twitter thing. The problem is, is if Mozzie ends up taking care of this gap right here, okay? If everybody's going through, oh, he took a playoff. Oh, he did the wrong sign. If Mozzie takes care of this gap right here, there is nobody else anywhere over here. Now you've got Mozzie filling in this gap and the linebacker filling in that gap. You got two guys here. You got daylight forever. His responsibility is right here. His responsibility is right here. Linebacker's responsibility there. So you can call me, you know, the Mozzie defender now if you want to. I don't know exactly what the assignments were. I'm assuming that. I can't look at it and say that the, the linebacker's assignment was outside. The linebacker's job is to recognize where it is. This is my gap and to fill. Well, this guy did his job. Mozzie got this spot. Linebacker missing in action. One more time. Let's watch it. Boom. Where's the linebacker going? Where the hell is the linebacker going? Where is the linebacker going? So, again. Again. Yeah, you know, people will see things different ways one way or the other. I see that, and I say the linebacker was at fault on that. The linebacker, if you look at the statistics and the numbers, you don't see defensive linemen with 100-plus tackles in a season. Why? Because the linebackers are the ones that are designed to get the tackles, and that was a pace there where the linebacker was out of spot. But then again, somebody feel free to tell me I'm wrong Tell me, come through, point out where, what, I, what I said was wrong. And we'll go from there. All righty, good people. I am back. And uh, about two hours from now, I'll be joining Game Time Brian on his live stream. And uh, tonight, we'll probably do a live stream, too, to get caught up with everything that is. And hopefully, we get some more news on CD Lamb as well as we, we talking about practice today. Not the game. We'll be talking about practice. As always, I appreciate you. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boos